Max Theodor Felix von Law was a German physicist who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1914 for his discovery of the diffraction of X-rays by crystals. In addition to his scientific endeavors with contributions in optics, crystallography, quantum theory, superconductivity, and the theory of relativity, he had a number of administrative positions which advanced and guided German scientific research and development during four decades. A strong objector to National Socialism, he was instrumental in re-establishing and organizing German science after World War II. Biography Early Years Law was born in Pfaffendorf, now part of Koblenz, to Julius Law and Minna Zerenner. In 1898, after passing his abitur in Strasbourg, he began his compulsory year of military service, after which in 1899 he started to study mathematics, physics and chemistry at the University of Strasbourg, the University of Göttingen, and the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich, LMU. At Göttingen, he was greatly influenced by the physicists Wold M. R. Voigt and Max Abraham and the mathematician David Hilbert. After only one semester at Munich, he went to the Friedrich Wilhelms University of Berlin in 1902. There, he studied under Max Planck, who gave birth to the quantum theory revolution on December 14, 1900, when he delivered his famous paper before the Deutsche Physikalische Gesellschaft. At Berlin, Law attended lectures by Otto Lummier on heat radiation and interference spectroscopy, the influence of which can be seen in Law's dissertation on interference phenomena in plane parallel plates, for which he received his doctorate in 1903. Thereafter, Law spent 1903-1905 at Göttingen. Law completed his habilitation in 1906 under Arnold Sommerfeld at LMU. Career In 1906, Law became a privat dozent in Berlin and an assistant to Planck. He also met Albert Einstein for the first time, they became friends and Law went on to contribute to the acceptance and development of Einstein's theory of relativity. Law continued as assistant to Planck until 1909. In Berlin, he worked on the application of entropy to radiation fields and on the thermodynamic significance of the coherence of light waves. From 1909 to 1912, Law was a privat dozent at the Institute for Theoretical Physics, under Arnold Sommerfeld, at LMU. During the 1911 Christmas recess and in January 1912, Paul Peter Ewald was finishing the writing of his doctoral thesis under Sommerfeld. It was on a walk through the English Ischer Garden in Munich in January, that Ewald told Law about his thesis topic. The wavelengths of concern to Ewald were in the visible region of the spectrum and hence much larger than the spacing between the resonators in Ewald's crystal model. Law seemed distracted and wanted to know what would be the effect if much smaller wavelengths were considered. In June, Sommerfeld reported to the Physicalist Gesellschaft of Göttingen on the successful diffraction of X-rays by Law, Paul Nipping, and Walter Friedrich at LMU, for which Law would be awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics, in 1914. While at Munich, he wrote the first volume of his book on relativity during the period 1910-1911. In 1912, Law was called to the University of Zurich as an extraordinary professor of physics. In 1913, his father was raised to the ranks of hereditary nobility, Law then became Max von Law. In 1914 a new professor extraordinary as chair of theoretical physics had been created at the University of Berlin. Law was offered the position but turned it down, and it was offered to Max Born. But Born was in the army until WWI ended, and before he had occupied the chair, Law changed his mind and accepted the position. From 1914 to 1919, Law was at the University of Frankfurt as Ordinarius Professor of Theoretical Physics. From 1916, he was engaged in vacuum tube development, at the University of Würzburg for use in military telephony and wireless communications. In 1919, Law was called to the University of Berlin as Ordinarius Professor of Theoretical Physics, a position he held until 1943, when he was declared emeritus, with his consent and one year before the mandatory retirement age. At the university in 1919, other notables were Walter Nernst, Fritz Haber, and James Frank. Law as one of the organizers of the weekly Berlin Physics Colloquium, 
typically sat in the front row with Nernst and Einstein, who would come over from the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physik in berlin Dahlem, where he was the director. Among Law's notable students at the university were Leo Szilard, Fritz London, Max Kohler, and Erna Weber. In 1921, he published the second volume of his book on relativity. As a consultant to the Physikalisk Technisk Reichsanstalt, PTR, Law met Walter Meissner who was working there on superconductivity. Meissner had discovered that a weak magnetic field decays rapidly to zero in the interior of a superconductor, which is known as the Meissner effect. Law showed in 1932 that the threshold of the applied magnetic field which destroys superconductivity varies with the shape of the body. Law published a total of 12 papers and a book on superconductivity. One of the papers was co-authored with Fritz London and his brother Heinz. Meissner published a biography on Law in 1960. The Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft zur Forderung der Wissenschaften, today, Max Planck Gesellschaft zur Forderung der Wissenschaften, was founded in 1911. Its purpose was to promote the sciences by founding and maintaining research institutes. One such institute was the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Physik, KWIP, founded in berlin Dahlem in 1914, with Einstein as director. Law was a trustee of the institute from 1917, and in 1922 he was appointed deputy director, whereupon Law took over the administrative duties from Einstein. Einstein was traveling abroad when Adolf Hitler became chancellor in January 1933, and Einstein did not return to Germany. Law then became acting director of the KWIP, a position he held until 1946 or 1948, except for the period 1935 to 1939, when Peter Debye was director. In 1943, to avoid casualties to the personnel, the KWIP moved to Hechingen. It was at Hechingen that Law wrote his book on the history of physics Geschichte Physik, which was eventually translated into seven other languages. Opposition to Nazism Law opposed National Socialism in general and their Deutsche Physik in particular the former persecuted the Jews, in general, and the latter, among other things, put down Einstein's theory of relativity as Jewish physics. Law and his close friend Otto Hahn secretly helped scientific colleagues persecuted by National Socialist policies to emigrate from Germany. Law also openly opposed the policies. An address on September 18, 1933 at the opening of the Physics Convention in Würzburg, opposition to Johannes Stark, an obituary note on Fritz Haber in 1934, and attendance at a commemoration for Haber are examples which clearly illustrate Law's courageous, open opposition. Law, as chairman of the Deutsche Physikalisk Gesellschaft, gave the opening address at the 1933 Physics Convention. In it, he compared the persecution of Galileo and the oppression of his scientific views on the solar theory of Copernicus to the then conflict and persecution over the theory of relativity by the proponents of Deutsche Physik, against the work of Einstein, labeled Jewish physics. Johannes Stark, who had received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1919, wished to become the Führer of German physics and was a proponent of Deutsche Physik. Against the unanimous advice of those consulted, Stark was appointed president of the PTR in May 1933. However, Law successfully blocked Stark's regular membership in the Prussian Academy of Sciences. Haber received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1918. In spite of this and his many other contributions to Germany, he was forced to emigrate from Germany as a result of the law for the restoration of the professional civil service, which removed Jews from their jobs. Law's obituary note praising Haber and comparing his forced emigration to the expulsion of Themistocles from Athens was a direct affront to the policies of National Socialism. In connection with Haber, Max Planck, Otto Hahn, and Law organized a commemoration event held in berlin Dahlem on January 29, 1935, the first anniversary of Haber's death attendance at the event by professors in the civil service had been expressly forbidden by the government. While many scientific and technical personnel were represented at the memorial by their wives, Law and Wolfgang Hubner were the only two professors to attend. This was yet another blatant demonstration of Law's opposition to National Socialism. 
The date of the first anniversary of Haber's death was also one day before the second anniversary of National Socialism seizing power in Germany, thus further increasing the affront given by holding the event. The speech and the obituary note earned law government reprimands. Furthermore, in response to law blocking Stark's regular membership in the Prussian Academy of Sciences, Stark, in December 1933, had law sacked from his position as advisor to the PTR, which law had held since 1925. Chapters 4 and 5, in Welker's Nazi Science, Myth, Truth and the Atomic Bomb, present a more detailed account of the struggle by law and Planck against the Nazi takeover of the Prussian Academy of Sciences. Hidden Nobel Prize When Nazi Germany invaded Denmark in World War II, the Hungarian chemist George de Hevesy dissolved the Nobel Prize gold medals of law and James Frank in Aqua Regia to prevent the Nazis from discovering them. At the time, it was illegal to take gold out of the country, and if it had been discovered that law had done so he could have faced prosecution in Germany. Hevesy placed the resulting solution on a shelf in his laboratory at the Niels Bohr Institute. After the war, he returned to find the solution undisturbed and precipitated the gold out of the acid. The Nobel Society then recast the Nobel Prize gold medals, using the original gold. Post-war On April 23, 1945, French troops entered Hechingen, followed the next day by a contingent of Operation Alsos an operation to investigate the German nuclear energy effort, seize equipment and prevent German scientists from being captured by the Soviets. The scientific advisor to the operation was the Dutch-American physicist Samuel Goud Smit, who, adorned with a steel helmet, appeared at Law's home. Law was taken into custody and taken to Huntingdon, England and interned at Farm Hall with other scientists thought to be involved in nuclear research and development. While incarcerated, Law was a reminder to the other detainees that one could survive the Nazi reign without having compromised, this alienated him from others being detained. During his incarceration, Law wrote a paper on the absorption of X-rays under the interference conditions, and it was later published in Acta Crystallographica. On October 2, 1945, Law, Otto Hahn, and Werner Heisenberg, were taken to meet with Henry Hallett Dale, president of the Royal Society, and other members of the Society. There, Law was invited to attend November 9, 1945 Royal Society meeting in memory of the German physicist Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen, who discovered X-rays, permission was, however, not forthcoming from the military authorities detaining von Law. Law was returned to Germany early in 1946. He went back to being acting director of the KWIP, which had been moved to Göttingen. It was also in 1946 that the Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft was renamed the Max Planck Gesellschaft, and, likewise, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Physik became the Max Planck Institute für Physik. Law also became an adjunct professor at the University of Göttingen. In addition to his administrative and teaching responsibilities, Law wrote his book on superconductivity, Theorie der Subproletung, and revised his books on electron diffraction, Materiellen und ihre Interferenzen, and the first volume of his two-volume book on relativity. In July 1946, Law went back to England, only four months after having been interned there, to attend an international conference on crystallography. This was a distinct honor, as he was the only German invited to attend. He was extended many courtesies by the British officer who escorted him there and Beck, and a well-known English crystallographer as his host, Law was even allowed to wander around London on his own free will. After the war, there was much to be done in re-establishing and organizing German scientific endeavors. Law participated in some key roles. In 1946, he initiated the founding of the Deutsche Physikalist Gesellschaft in only the British occupation zone, as the Allied Control Council would not initially allow organizations across occupation zone boundaries. During the war, the PTR had been dispersed, von Law, from 1946 to 1948, worked on its reunification across three zones and its location at new facilities in Braunschweig. Additionally, it took on a new name as the Physikalisk Technisk Bundesanstalt, 
but administration was not taken over by Germany until after the formation of West Germany on May 23, 1949. Circa 1948, the president of the American Physical Society asked Law to report on the status of physics in Germany, his report was published in 1949 in the American Journal of Physics. In 1950, Law participated in the creation of the Verband Deutscher Physikalischer Gesellschaften, formerly affiliated under the Nordwest Deutsche Physikalische Gesellschaft. In April 1951, Law became director of the Max Planck Institute für Physikalische Chemie und Elektrochemie, a position he held until 1959. In 1953, at the request of Law, the institute was renamed the Fritz Haber Institute für Physikalische Chemie und Elektrochemie der Max Planck Gesellschaft. Personal Life It was in 1913 that Law's father, Julius Law, a civil servant in the military administration, was raised into the ranks of hereditary nobility. Thus Max Law became Max von Law. Law married Magdalene Degen, while he was a privat dozent at LMU. They had two children. Among Law's chief recreational activities were mountaineering, motoring in his automobile, motorbiking, sailing, and skiing. While not a mountain climber, he did enjoy hiking on the alpine glaciers with his friends. On April 8, 1960, while he was driving to his laboratory, Law's car was struck in Berlin by a motorcyclist, who had received his license only two days earlier. The motorcyclist was killed and Law's car was overturned. He died from his injuries 16 days later on 24 April. Being a profound believer, he had asked that his epitaph should read that he had died trusting firmly in God's mercy.